The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. Until Jim moved, Dave wasn't in the upper left, but Dave's there now. It's Dave Chow. Pleasure to be here, as always. Excellent. So what's it like to sit on 150 books all at once? It's a little warm and toasty, paper sharp. You know, it's all, it's all good. Paper sharp. Why don't you uh, throw in a plug for this book that you wrote the forward for? It's so cool. Um, it's a book on Detroit Tiki. So I have a friend of mine, Renee, and she wrote, uh, she did most of the research. We took on this project pre-COVID, and we talk about all the tiki bars around the Detroit area from a historical point of view. That's very cool. Plenty of photographs, one drink recipe, uh, a lot of pictures, uh, never, never been seen before. So. Oh, very cool. Very, very so, cool. Fun stuff. Best of luck as you continue down that endeavor. Oh, joy. <laughs> uh, Heather Hill is here with us today. Hello. You know, when I look out the window, I don't care whether it's getting close to the end of uh, January, Heather. The sun shining today makes me think, I bet Heather's thinking about all of the things that are going to come out of the ground in a few weeks. I'm always thinking about that. I have to order some seeds. <laughs> What are you going to order? Um, there's a couple of kinds of um, petunias that I would like to put in the front planters. Cool. Very cool. So, and are we, some other things. Are we doing anything to uh, fend off the whistle pigs this year? Um, we shall see. I mean, we've done a pretty good job so far. They seem to uh, migrate across the street. So. Oh. The, the yeah. large dog probably has a say in it, right? Yeah, I think that might be helping a little bit. Yeah, so. I'm just feeling bad for anybody who just started listening to our show and listens to us, you know, talk about such things. We're like, what the heck is their problem? What are they talking about? Oh, <laughs> list our problems. We, we only have a half hour show. And Good when luck. you when you figure it out, let us know <laughs> yeah. what our problem is. Uh, Stephen Manning is also here with us today in his traditional spot with the library in the background. Hello. What's going on, Stephen? Uh, not much. <laughs> not much. Sweet. That's okay. There's piano, nothing wrong with dog, that. Piano, the dog, apparently spring planting in the in the offing. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Hey, I do want to up to can I update something? Last week we had the your favorite kitchen thing. Can I update that briefly? Of course. Mine is my walk that I bought when I moved to Madison, Wisconsin to start grad school in 1977. And I bought it around that time and have lugged it around the country ever since. And the weird thing is when we got off the other day, a week ago today, after saying that, I don't forget what I said, but um, I went Saboteur to- Saboteur knives, your saboteur yeah, knives. I, and I went to the kitchen and the wok is on the stove because I had stir fried with it like two nights ago and was stir frying with it that very night, a week ago tonight, and why it didn't come to me, I don't know, but that's probably my, one of my favorite, uh, favorite things. And it's, it's, it's charred, it's black. And when I go to use it, I put it on the stove and I turn the, the heat up to high. And this, mm -hmm. is a, you know, this is a Viking professional stove. So it's fairly powerful. And I go off and you know, chop vegetables and stuff for 15 minutes. The thing, you cannot overheat this thing you put the oil in and in two minutes later, you're eating. So that's yeah, so I, awesome. I love my knives, but uh, my walk is probably, probably in first place. Steven, will, uh, yeah. Steven, if it means anything, when my, you know, when my grandparents fled the Japanese, when they invaded, that was one of the two items that they took with them. Wow. They well, you got to have your priorities straight here. Uh -huh. What was the other item? Quality. It's, it's the, carbon the rice. steel. Carbon yeah, steel, right. so it's indestructible. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I think that uh, Dan said that with a cast iron thing, you don't have to clean it. You just wipe mm -hmm. it out with a rag and you know you don't want to wash it with soap and water particularly, but this thing is just indestructible. Beautiful. Well, um, we will, thanks for the update, Stephen. We will send you 
the several hours of paperwork it will take to update the archive for the responses to the imponderables. Well, Stephen, you grab the walk. I'm still grabbing the martini shaker. Uh huh. Priorities. Uh -huh. Priorities. Again. Sides covered. I think both of them are in the will. <laughs> You know, uh, Beth Old is also here with us today. I am. Clearly, clearly, you know your way around a walk. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't use a walk to stir fry, but yeah. I mean, I had one once upon a time. Yeah. What happened to it? Yeah. Uh oh. I think maybe it did get, you know, wasn't a particularly good one. I think maybe it did give out and, you know, a skillet oh. works. Uh, I find a skillet or my saute pan works just as well. So it's true. If you got a good saute pan, you pretty much can do whatever you want That's, for the rest of your life. Yeah. Plus, yeah, I don't, we don't do a lot of, I, I'm never quite pleased with my stir fries i can't quite you don't use a wok that's because you're not using a wok <laughs> i really <laughs> don't think that's it but <laughs> i suppose it's possible this, i'm going to uh, for zombie beth walk i'm going to ask mara livesey uh to see if we can uh she can help us switch gears from the walk side of things to the what run side, side of things, things. Yeah, run side of things oh. well uh <laughs> the runs are going well <laughs> oh yeah you're still running oh there we go <laughs> still running uh i just don't run when it gets much Ready? below oh, like 25. I was gonna ask if you're sick sorry i misunderstood <laughs> <laughs> no not that kind of runs no so so Ooh. i'm guessing mara today was not a run day then because it was pretty cold today is not a run day any day where it's too cold is a bike day we have a yes. bike in the basement and i'm just it gets too cold sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on in our household. So we're like laying there thinking, are we gonna no, use the bike? Use the bike. It's yeah. not worth it on days like this. And I gotta just sneak this one in because this whole time I've been thinking about this when you were talking about Dave sitting on his books. And the only thing I could think of is what what's like what's the paper cut situation like oh. me too i was oh. wondering like about the whole that. time no but like, no I couldn't say it don't no. shift don't <laughs> the, 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 the books are bound okay i i don't need to be opening them with my uh with my cheeks well matt matt you said something about sharp paper so my yeah. mind immediately went to paper cuts on the butt is that oh, no it? no good to know i'm not the only one beth no oh. no <laughs> good lord um, Jim Jim Tubbs. Think alike. <laughs> Jim Tubbs, Tubbs is here with us today as well. Hello, no paper cuts here. <laughs> oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh. Um, I have a uh, paper cut obsessed uh, son, uh, Jim, and that's why we have honestly like 10 boxes of Band-Aids in our house because, you know, Band-Aids help you heal, at least from the perspective of a nine-year-old. So every time he gets like too close to paper, he's like, oh, I need a Band-Aid. I'm like, Nothing even happened. Come on, what's going on? I don't get it. Band-aids are cool, Dad. Should you just get a should you folks just have like super glue handy? I mean, it's easier. I mean I shouldn't like say he's it. He's more obsessed with band-aids than he is with paper. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. I, I always ask people as sort of like a personality defining question, uh, Jim, since you're up, do you have band-aids in your home that have yes. like pictures of cartoon characters on no. them? No. Uh, I figured ah, you had those. Yeah. Rose, Rosemary Weatherston had those too when her girls were young. Mm -hmm. I asked because, um, you know, our office manager here in chemistry, you know, when there's students around, uh, someone will say, I need a band aid. And Jane will be like, Minions or Marvel? <laughs> She's prepared. <laughs> Uh, most last, but most not least, it's Dan Maggio here with us today on the panel. Hello, Matt. How are you? What's going on, Dan? No, oh, not much. Another week. Gone. La <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sun streaming in through your window in the background there. It feels good, doesn't it? It does. Um, it is always nice when the sun is out, actually. Yeah. So it was a beautiful day. When, I did when not Mar go running. Was talking oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I did not go running today. Oh, I was going to say, when Mara was run, talking about running, uh, at least you're unimpeded with your running. It is cold, yeah. but, you know, we're not doing the snow thing so far this year. So we're in good shape. 
but I did walk some eggs for breakfast. Oh, nice. Did it work? No. <laughs> Actually, it got me thinking. I used to have a walk many years ago, like Beth. It was a nice walk. And I don't know what, I, I know what happened to it. I probably hadn't used it and got rid of it. But mm. now I'm regretting that decision um, because I would like to have, it's probably because I had an electric stove, which don't, which really Get don't work hot. well with walks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to have gas. And now that I have gas, I wish I had that walk back. Thanks, Stephen, for the reminder. <laughs> now I know. Away. Now I know what to get you for Christmas or your birthday. There you go. I'm well, we're getting hints already. Dueling walks now. So, well, listeners, this is a program. You can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. Emailing us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook and Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Um, let's do this from the most positive perspective we can. Um, the time of this email is 12.05 p.m. Eastern Standard on, of course, January 21st, 2022. That's today. Hi. In honor of Minnesota native Louis Anderson's passing just oh. this morning... Here are two sets of 10 questions each about him. I hope you consider for a future episode of ATP. Facts about Louis Anderson, parentheses, passing is still 70%. And these were sent by longtime question sender, Chris Bovitz of Lakeview, Minnesota, uh, Lakeville, Minnesota. Thank you for being uh, so on the ball. You know, my day started with the passing of Meatloaf and it's ending with the passing of Louis Anderson. Very Is there, there going to be a third in threes, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. that's. I hope not. I hope oh. not. As so long as it's not a beetle, one of the two remaining beetles, I can handle it. I'm afraid that you're going to live to see that someday, Beth. Um, you got to mentally prepare. Gotta I know. Prepare, folks. From what city was um, Louis Anderson from? Minneapolis. The Twin Cities. I got to go partial credit in both cases. He was actually uh, from St. Paul, oh, Saint Paul okay. Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Whoop, I think I gave something away. How many siblings um, did he have? And where was he in the birth order? That's a good question. Ooh. Five siblings. It was more. Oh, eight. Seven. It was more. Wow. wow. Okay, is um, anyone feeling sorry for his far. mother at this point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give it to Mara, you know, within a standard deviation of one. There were 11 kids, but wow. where was he in the birth order? The, uh, the, the baby? Youngest. Uh, pr pretty close. He, he was 10 of 11 because, you know, that's a common psychological profile. <laughs> I was going to say, the youngest kid. Yep. Do, do, do we need to call Kendra and have her zero in for all of us again? Wait, you always wanted to be the youngest, Mara? Is that what you said? Oh, no, never. But oh, that okay. it, like, it's typical of youngest kids to crack jokes, right. right? I am the youngest, and it's not always a picnic, I can assure you. Mm -hmm. But Beth, you're hilarious, seriously. <laughs> well, now we know why. <laughs> How many, I guess exactly. we got the, the family comedic <laughs> relief. <laughs> Professors, on which TV show did Louis Anderson make his network debut in the year 1984. Ooh, Carson, wasn't it? I'm giving it to you. The Tonight Show. Yep, absolutely. The Tonight Show is one of those. I mean, I'm still kind of in love with stand up. And I think it's because I watched Johnny Carson growing up because he would give all those comics a chance to just. Mm -hmm. yep. We wouldn't have Jerry Seinfeld if it wasn't for that, frankly. So Jay Leno, I mean, all those others. Rodney Dangerfield on The Tonight Show. John Rivers. Oh, yeah. and. Robin Williams for first time on the tonight show was there you go. legend. Absolutely. I remember I was watching it and he just grabbed the mic and went out in the audience. And I'm like, man, you're taking a risk because if <laughs> Carson doesn't like you, you're, it's not only that you're not ever back on the show, but he's obviously got quite a bit of clout. Yeah, so it'll never work again. Exactly. Right. So I thought it was good. Of course, it paid off because it's Robin Williams. He's brilliant. It was hysterical. Seriously. In what uh, spy adventure movie, spy adventure movie, did Louis Anderson make his film debut in the 1980s? Spy kids? Spies like nope. us? Nope. 
Was it Adventures in Babysitting or something like that? No. No, it no. wasn't. But Dan, I see the way your mind works. Maybe this will help you all. I can pick. I can sort of pick. His credited role was Taxi Driver. Spy movie of the 80s. I'm thinking like Total Recall? No, no, that was a, that was a Johnny Taxi. No. Uh... It's not one that jumps off the page into one's brain. It was Cloak and Dagger was the name oh, of it. Oh, I never would have got that. And I've he just had a it. bit part. However, he had a lot more success and a lot more press um, in what detective TV series that he made his regular television debut. Oh, what was that one? Diver. When when Dave Chow can't just immediately say the answer so no, that we can I'm, move on, it must be a tough problem. That's all I can No, say. because I'm I'm still revering his role, at, you know, in coming to America. So I mean I'm I, mm-hmm. I still love you know as Maurice employee of the month. So was it the TV show with the two brothers? Uh Gerald McRaney and I can't remember the name. Um, oh you well, um was it buddies? No, 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 I, no, I, know no was, I know it was something like uh Meyer and Meyer, right? Oh, the yeah. Two two um, names, and I just can't remember their last wow. name. Oh, I like Gentlemen, the way your brains work. Yeah, it's kind of like the male version of Cagney and Lacey. I know, I know what you're right. talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm surprised. I'm sort of surprised. It was uh the very, very popular at the time. Remington Steel is oh. right with Pierce Brosnan Pierce and uh, Brosnan. Yeah. and who, who's a female lead? Uh, Stephanie Zimbalist. Yes, yeah, that's right. Mm. That was a great show, actually. Now. Yeah, I didn't think it was so good. <laughs> I am specifically looking in the direction of Professor Libsy because this is one that is right for you. Set up, set up, set up straight. Most people from the millennial generation will remember that Louis created an animated TV show for Fox Kids. What was the title? Was it just, a, I thought it was just a Louis Anderson show. So yeah. like... Little Louie An animated series when I was a kid on Fox. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember the show because I remember the drawings. Um, oh, crud. Heather got pretty close. She said Little Louie. It's pretty close. Big Louie? Baby Mini. Louie. Medium sized Baby Louie. Louie. Mini me? <laughs> Moderate Baby. size. Uh, oh, my gosh. You know, the name of the cartoon was Life with Louie is what it was called. And he oh. played himself as uh-huh. a young boy. Uh-huh. And never heard of it. I remember the animation style. Mm-hmm. So which other stand up comedian called Louie, quote, one of the lightest on his feet comedians that I know, uh, unquote. I can give you a hint about what uh, this comedian's claim to fame was an extremely short lived stint on monday night football how's that oh oh crud I'm tri- oh dennis miller dennis miller yes everybody forgets that no. the uh, couple of games that he called one year and uh all of us were like why wait a minute wait a minute i'm confused what was the question again so which other stand-up comedian called Louis Anderson one of the lightest on his feet comedians uh, okay. I know? Okay. okay. I, I don't know beyond this person works in comedy. What other clue I could give? So Dennis Miller, yeah. Well, didn't he also do, he was Weekend Update on SNL? Mm-hmm. Yep. That was his claim to fame. Yes. yes. Louis created a network TV show called The Louis Show. Where was that show set and what was his profession on the show? It was short lived, but it was pretty funny. Was he a comedian? Um, I was going to say, don't go too far <laughs> from reality. He wasn't a comedian. You know, he actually was a, uh, Taxi driver? a psychotherapist no. on the show. Well, they're very similar jobs. So. <laughs> What's more comfortable than the other? So. Chicago. Well, he grew yeah, up in St. Paul and he decided to go a little further north. Where do you think he would be? Duluth. Argo? Duluth, Duluth, Minnesota. Yes, exactly. Where, where's our ATP American map when we need one? <laughs> yeah, I miss that thing. Whew, this is uh, taking me back. What game show did Louis host? Family Feud. Family Feud. Yeah. Who did he replace? Richard Ray Combs. Austin? Ray Combs. Oh. But yeah. you're 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 getting the partial credit for the next step, uh, Heather, because the next question was who replaced him. It was Richard Karn of uh, um, Home Improvement fame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. 
For what home state dairy company did Louis Anderson um, become a pitch man for? Land of Lakes. Land of Lakes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This is uh, this is kind of a nice little tour. A lot of his uh, more common roles, and of course, uh, Dave has uh, stolen the thunder. But because he knows his references, we'll we'll let him get away with it. Um, two movies. It's actually kind of sad that uh, Louis Anderson played Maurice in Coming to America and Coming to America Two and Coming to America, which ended up being his final movie yeah. as of this morning. So it was just released last year. In what TV series did Louis Anderson play a character named Christine? Oh, that was just a couple oh. of years ago. Yes. It looks, I mean, I remember I saw it. He looked great, you know. It was a very oh, funny show. It was on Fox, right? Uh, I thought it was NBC, but I could be wrong. Oh, okay. But I remember, oh, as horrible as it sounds, he, you know, in that makeup, looked like one of the past CCS presidents. <laughs> That does not sound no, very no. good. But I just want, oh, This is the one um, where was the a, main character was played by, I want to say it was Zach Galifianakis. Do I have yes, that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The and name of the show it was yeah. pretty highly acclaimed. It was called Baskets is what it was called. Uh, it was about a clown. Baskets the clown. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also had a very, very small but extremely successful role playing Winston Churchill on basically my wife's favorite comedy show of all time. And if you've never seen it, buckle up and go streaming. Who did he play Winston Churchill? On what show did he play Winston Churchill? Not Monty Python. Was it Monty no, but Python? you're getting really close. Benny Hill? Nope. Think a little more modern. Just the last few years on Comedy Central. British? Mm -mm, not oh. British. Not South Park. Nope. He actually say, played Winston Churchill live on this show. Mm -hmm. Adult Swim? Um, Little Bush? Getting really, really close. It's Drunk History. If you've never ah, seen Drunk okay. History. Oh, okay. That is an eye-opener right there. That's your wife's favorite comedy? Oh, my gosh. Has I've never seen, seen Leslie comedy, laugh or? so hard. Because the show, for those who aren't aware, is the main producer writer guy getting his friend drunk, like real honest to God drunk uh -huh. and having them walk through historical events as like an observer that is then recreated by famous actors, <laughs> mouthing oh the words God. of the drunk person telling the story. <laughs> and it is through the roof. Hilarious. Okay. Absolutely. I'll check it out. Me too. The premise sounds oh, amazing. So. Okay, well, I can't ask you about life with Louis. We already passed through that uh, um, situation here. Oh, okay. So he actually, um, let's see, uh, played a character in the pilot of a very successful 1980s sitcom with two main male actors. Sadly, after the pilot, he was replaced by another actor. Frazier? Mm -mm. A little bit before that. Before that. Was that Bosom Buddies? No, but I'm, I'm giving it to you because, uh, no offense uh, to your memory, Beth, a lot of people mess up or mix up Bosom Buddies and this other sitcom, which is... Oh, the, uh, the one with Balky, um, is that the one? What is it? Um, Perfect Strangers. It, Perfect Thank Strangers. Yeah. There yeah, we go. Know. Everybody Isn't remembers Balky it says and here, other guy. He would, have been, <laughs> um, he would have been a regular if they had kept him on the show, but he got replaced by somebody else. That's kind of sad. Oh. Not many people know that Louis Anderson played the credited role of unnamed flower delivery person in this extremely popular early Gen X movie from the 80s that starred um, Matthew Broderick. Ferris Four Bueller's days. Day Off. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> unnamed flower delivery person. Really? <laughs> oh, we're so to go one back of my and favorite check, movies. Check all these. Oh, my gosh. So funny. Last but not least, he played a guest role in one of the most popular, I guess we can call it drama, uh, one of the most popular dramas of the 1990s. 
like Mel Boston, Rose play. I don't know. Boston Legal. Let's let's go a little more on the schmaltzy side of what one might call drama. Less soap opera, more supposedly inspirational. I had a real problem with this show. Let me just put it that way. Oh, Lost? Nope. No. It was before no, that. Later. No, Lost was 2000s, right? He had a guest role in Touched by an Angel. Do you remember oh, Touched by an oh, Angel? Oh, Bella Reese? Yikes. That's all I have to say. Uh, I guess Lost doesn't really fit you what you said. There's not a lot of inspiration. No. I was going to say married with children, but... <laughs> right, right. All in the eye of the beholder. Eye of the beholder, that's right. So we have a few more minutes here, profs, and I've got a short list of questions that were sent in by uh, a student. Uh, list of 10 questions surrounding the idea of paleontology. These were sent in by one of uh, Professor Roach's students, Brennan Gorbowski, is sending us these see if we can uh, um, respond to. What is the name um, of the phenomenon? Oh, no. I guess we're not supposed to be able to say that one. This is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, my brain is broken and we have a list of questions and a list of answers separate and it's going to take an extra step to oh. be able to figure this out. What was the name of the largest extinct marine reptile? Oh, uh, what was that? What, what's that? Mega shark? What, Megalodon? Starts actually with the letter I. Yeah, the Megalodon. Ichthyo That's a great movie, by the way. Was it the Ichthyosaur or whatever? Yeah, something. Yeah, it was an Ichthyosaur. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the Ichthyosaur, whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, the whale saurus. <laughs> what percent of species were wiped out at the point when we say, that whatever event took place and it quote wiped out the dinosaur what percentage of species on earth were wiped out by that event whatever it was 90 i want to say that heather got there first is 90 90 plus percent of all species wow. Wow. destroyed that's pretty uh pretty wild there well you know but the dinosaurs got brought back in jurassic park so mm -hmm. if 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 you could buy that science and i'm sorry i just well, and, still and don't Brandon see how you Benstone made it through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I still don't see how you get an intact DNA strand out of mosquito blood in amber. It's and a movie. Matt, it's I know magic. you. No, 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 Matt. You said that this that actually was not the wonky part, right? That right. was not the. Yeah. Dan said it's a movie. <laughs> I think if it were possible, somebody would have capitalized on that by now in the real world. They're like making mammoths. Yeah. That's so true. they're doing mm -hmm. something like that. They really yeah. were. Siberia. I, why. I remember asking <laughs> Matt about that. Then because you because I said this before that that struck me as kind of a scientifically weird thing. But you said that you could get an intact DNA or fill in the gaps, right? With frog right. DNA, sure that's what they did. Sort of ovum you put it into. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I mean it's it's in that. the wheelhouse. It's in I've the wheelhouse. I've always wanted some amber earrings. Mm. Intent. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just <laughs> not, heard something to the effect of they're making, like someone's, uh, the tenor of someone's voice made it sound like they're making like replacement mammoths. And I'm like, oh, my mammoth just ran out of gas. I need to go wow. get another <laughs> Uh, professors, um, this is off the charts. This is awesome. And by the way, all these are cited. Thank you uh, for that, Brendan. That's actually helpful. All the coal on planet Earth existed in its current form before what type of living thing even existed in the history of the world? Oil barons. Humans. Bacteria. Vertebrates. All, all partial credit. Before the first fungus existed, oh, wow. all the coal that exists today was already formed. Okay, Isn't so wild? I was wow. closest. I was closest. I, I would say so. Bacteria. I would say so. Oh, bacteria and fungi are pretty different, Beth. <laughs> okay, scientist. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll, uh, we'll recover on this one. Don't be all sciencey. I understand. <laughs> we'll recover on this one. There's your Sharks. Plan are famously older than what species of plant? Plankton? No. 
That can't be right. Plant, plant. Cactus. Species. Um, hemp. Uh, LJ? Oh. <laughs> no. I don't even know if that's even an appropriate answer to the question. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if LJ is a plant. Where like is, ferns? Where is Stephanie? You, what's that well, really old type of tree? Redwood? Sequoias? Well, no. Heather is basically fire right now. I'm giving it to you. Before there were any trees, trees. there were sharks. Wow. Weird. Well, they life started in the oceans. And then the jets across town took it over. Oh. We've all, we've all seen Jaws. We know the speech that Richard Dreyfus gives about, you know, this is a miracle of evolution. All it does is swim and eat and make baby sharks. That's, That's it. Right. And we need a bigger tree. Oh. I just remember a uh, weekend update, actually, on Saturday Night Live, where sharks were off the cuff referred to as death tubes. And that was the whole <laughs> bit was that they were making a uh, news story about sharks and everything was legit, except for they didn't use the word shark. They called them death tubes. Well, they did have land shark, though. As land a, you shark. Know. Candy God. Graham. That's yeah. right. <laughs> one more. Another one more. Related death. Oh. Yeah. For those of us who are old. You know. oh. Older. Older. Specifically from the 1993 movie Jurassic Park, the 1993 movie. What species of raptor is shown attacking the people? I'll give you a hint that it's named after a state of the United States. It was a velociraptor, but okay. yeah. I guess I'm wrong. It's a little more specific than that. Velociraptor is sort of a big family name, and then there's like... Focusing. Wyoming raptor. You scientists in your taxonomy. Oh. I'm giving it to Heather, even though she's one state off. It's uh, the Utah Raptor is the I'm actual just name. <laughs> just she was can, in the vicinity. Heather, wow. can, can you buy me lottery tickets? So it's a Mormon <laughs> devouring animal. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, they went to temple. Some of them are pretty goofy because they're most often named after where their bones were found. And, you know, Utah is a human concept. <laughs> like, I don't think the raptors care too much right. about yeah. being named and after. And they were only on vacation when they died there, too. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was a timeshare, Jim. It was a timeshare. A perfect, perfect segue. Thank with you, Professor few. Tubbs, because I'm afraid the time has come for us to say goodbye, Dan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jim. Goodbye. Mara. Goodbye. Beth. Goodbye. Steven. Goodbye. Heather. Goodbye. And Dave. See ya. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. Ask the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host. Matt Mayo.